But we do want to go ahead and get into our study here in Romans. Now, when we look at where we are in the book of Romans, uh, really the section that we're looking at goes back to the end of chapter 3 into chapter 4, and then it works its way through chapter 6, which we'll finish up this evening. And this particular section that we're looking at is dealing with uh, the justification that is possible through the gospel. So if you think back into chapter 4, Romans chapter 4, we find that it is possible to be justified by faith. How do we know it is possible that we can be justified by faith? Do we remember the examples that Paul gives in that chapter? There's one main one, the example of Abraham. By Abraham's example, he believed God accounted it to him for righteousness. Look at the end of Romans chapter 4. That wasn't said just for Abraham's benefit, but also for our benefit. Because as we move into Romans chapter 5, well, we are justified by faith. Because we are justified by faith, we can have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Uh, even thinking about the peace, the way that peace, that justification is all possible, again, through Jesus Christ, how can we have that through Jesus? What, what did he do for us? He died. That's Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11, right? He died for us. God rose him up from the dead. Ultimately, that's dealing with the gospel. Because of the gospel, we can have justification. We can have peace with God. But at the end of Romans chapter 5, there was a, a little bit of a uh, comparison there between Jesus and Adam. Whenever one follows Adam and follows in those steps of what Paul says were disobedience, where does that type of a life lead? To death. But when one follows Christ in obedience, where does that lead? To eternal life. And so whenever you follow Christ in obedience to eternal life, it means that we're going to have to do something like Christ. Christ died for us, what must we do for him? We must be willing to die for self, die to self to live with him. That's what it takes to truly obey the gospel. Those things are done through uh, baptism. We get into Romans chapter 6, and in Romans chapter 6, look with me, verses 3 and 4. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And so we follow Christ in obedience even to that point through baptism. Just as God raised him up from the dead, well, God will spiritually raise us up as well so that we can now live a new life. Well, living that new life means that we no longer are, are bound to serve what? Sin. Because having obeyed the gospel, who do we now serve? God. Right? That's what we have whenever we keep looking in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 verse 16 says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey? Whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Now concerning that form of doctrine in verse 17, what form of doctrine is it that we have followed, that we have obeyed in order to be set free from sin? It's the gospel. Go back, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. We have conformed ourselves in obedience to Christ Jesus. We have taken the necessary steps to follow Him. But I want to emphasize again the same uh, point we made last time from verse 17. It's not just a, a rote obedience. It's not just, okay, I see the steps, I checked the box, I've done that, now I'm good. Where must this obedience come from? From the heart. My heart has to be in the right place. I have to understand why it is that this is possible for me. I'm never going to truly deserve it. I'm never going to uh, deserve what God has done, but God in His love, go back to Romans 5, 6 through 11, 
God in His love has provided this means for me. He has provided the gospel for me as an opportunity to now be right with Him. God has given me opportunity by the gospel to be set free from sin, to be set free from unrighteousness so that I can now serve Him in all righteousness. And think back to the, uh, uh, the comparison that was given in Romans 5 at the end of that chapter. I no longer in unrighteousness have to follow Adam. Following Adam again leads to where? To death. But now in righteousness and obedience I follow Christ, which leads to where? To eternal life. Uh, and so with all of these things in mind, uh, that brings us then to where uh, we are in our study and where we left off last time. Romans chapter 6, and we'll look in verses 20 through 23. Romans chapter 6, verses 20 through 23. And if one of y'all could, would you read those verses for us? For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the, thing, in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is dead. But now, having been set, from, set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So looking in verse 20, Paul says, For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. When is it that we were slaves to sin? Before baptism, before obedience, right? Up until that point, we are slaves of sin. But Paul, writing to a group of Christians, those who had followed the form of Christ Jesus in obedience, they had been baptized, they obeyed the gospel, they no longer are slaves of sin. If we have obeyed that same form of doctrine, if we have been baptized into His death, if we've risen with Him by the power of God, then we no longer are slaves of sin. And when you were slaves of sin, so before obeying the gospel, Paul says you were free in regard to what? <clears throat> to righteousness. Well, well, this makes sense. Sin is unrighteousness. If you are serving sin, then you're not going to be concerned with bringing forth righteousness. The end goal of the master of sin is more and more unrighteousness. That's ultimately what Paul gets to uh, in the verses just above. Uh, in verses 19 and... Uh, yeah, verse 19. That's the only verse immediately above verse 20. So in verse 19, it says there, I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness. So again, the end of sin was more lawlessness, more unrighteousness. That's why Romans 6 and verse 21, it, Paul says, Well, what fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? In other words, what Paul is saying is what good, what benefit was produced when you were still serving sin, when you were a slave of sin. Now, there's something important, I believe, uh, in this part of the verse, and we'll bring that out in just a moment. But in order to understand what serving sin produced, what that brings about, as we've already discussed from the example of Adam, you keep looking there in verse 21, and Paul says, For the end of those things is death. The fruit that came about from sin was really no fruit at all. But it was something that was rotten. It was something that was no good, that was unwanted, because what comes about from sin is death. But something I think is important that we can learn as it relates to what our attitude on this side of baptism, this side of obedience ought to be towards sin, uh, we can see here in verse 21. No longer serving sin, but now serving God, what attitude should we have towards sin? We should have shame toward it. Look again at what Paul says in verse 21. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? The things done while serving sin shouldn't be looked at, uh, you know, with, with joy and happiness. And we shouldn't, you know, look back and talk about how those were the good old days and those were the good times and we had so much fun. And, and now it's almost as if we don't have anything. That's the wrong attitude. You see, when we look back on sin and we look back on the time that we spent serving the master of sin, uh, 
there should be a sense of shame there. There should be a sense of regret and embarrassment for the time that we lost. And if we have that type of shame toward our former life and our former service in sin, then that ought to motivate us in our new service to God. It should motivate us to serve Him better and to serve Him more diligently. And so, verse 22, getting to where we are now. But now, having been set free from sin, how is it that we're set free from sin? Through baptism, through obedience, right? You go back up into uh, verse 17. Uh, you're no longer slaves of sin because you obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Verse 18, having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. As we discussed earlier in our review, that form of doctrine is obeying Christ, following Him, being baptized into Him, and rising to walk in newness of life. So Romans 6.22, but having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness. In the end, everlasting life. We no longer serve sin, but now we serve who? God. We no longer have to fear death because we're now following who? We're following God. We're following Christ Jesus. All of which leads to where? To heaven. It leads to eternal life. Paul has already explained this for us, if, or at least said it. If you go back into Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5 and verse 21, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now there's going to be wages paid for the work that is done. But in serving God, we do not deserve the ultimate wages that He pays. We do not deserve the grace that He gives through Jesus Christ, through the gospel, that gives us the hope and the opportunity for eternal life. Whenever it comes down to it, because of what we have done in our past, because of what we previously served and who our former master was, what is it that we deserve? We deserve death. You look in Romans 6 and verse 23, For the wages of sin is death. But when it comes to God's grace, when it comes to His free gift that He is willing to give, to everyone who follows the form of doctrine, to all who are willing to be obedient, even to that point of baptism, to follow in those steps of Jesus Christ. The gift of God is what? Eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We don't deserve it, but God by His grace is willing to give it to us. But there's something we must do if we wish to receive it. If it's left up to us, we would continue to follow sin. We would continue to serve sin. But God has given us a better way. God, through the gospel, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, has given us an example that just as Jesus overcame sin and death, we can overcome sin and death as well. And just as Jesus received a new life, just as He was risen up from the dead, well, we know that we can have a new life as well that we can live a new life spiritually here while we remain on this earth, but we have something better waiting for us. We have an eternal life, a never-ending home with God our Father, with the Lord Jesus Christ. But the choice is up to us. Look back up at Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey... You are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Which master are you serving this evening? And if you realize that you need to change that master, God is gracious. He's patient. He's merciful. And He's given us an opportunity this very night to make sure that we are serving Him like we ought to. And if you're ready to begin that service to Him and obeying the gospel for the first time, or if you need to make things right with Him so that you can begin that service once more, don't wait. But won't you come as we stand and as we sing?